Welcome to Coloma Junior High. My name is Wendy Trombley and I'm the building principal for the junior high with grades six through eight. I would like to provide a special welcome for our seventh and eighth graders, rising seventh and eighth graders this year. We have missed hearing your voices in our building and we are so excited to have you back face to face with us. So tonight, my goal is just to go over just a brief overview of some of the changes going into this year, because as we all know, this year is going to look and feel a little bit different than it did last year. And we want to make sure everyone understands those expectations and procedures. So let's walk through a typical day. So first of all, for my seventh and eighth graders, when you arrive, you're going to be coming in a different entrance. So my seventh graders, you will be coming in the main entrance, just like you always have. My eighth graders, we're going to ask that you follow the sidewalk around and you come in those doors down by the eighth grade hallway. Your eighth grade staff will be down there to greet you. Those doors will be open and we just want you to come in that way. And this is going to avoid those, those clusters and that crowding at the main entrance. My sixth graders will come in down by the gym, so they'll be coming in and right up to their hallway as well. So like we said, just to avoid that crowding. We've also made some adjust adjustments to the bell schedule. So you can see it's just slightly different than last year. The biggest change for my seventh and eighth graders is that we are going to have three lunch periods. Now on this particular schedule that you're looking at, I'm only showing the seventh and eighth grade lunch. Um, so we will, we will run a sixth grade lunch prior to the seventh grade lunch. And so that does adjust how we handle fourth hour. My seventh graders, you'll notice that your fourth hour is split. So you're going to go to fourth hour class for 25 minutes. Then you'll take a break. You'll go to lunch. And then you'll return to that fourth hour class for the final 30 minutes before going on to fifth and sixth hour. My eighth graders, you're going to have our third lunch period. And so you're eating a little bit later than the day, in the day. But you're still... Um, um, going through your whole fourth hour to lunch and then moving on to your fifth and sixth hour. RTI is now moved to after third hour, but we're still having that daily. So let's talk about attendance. We understand that attendance is so important to your academic success. You need to be here to know what's going on and be with your teachers, but we also need to keep everybody health and safety, healthy and safe. And so what that means is we need to make sure that parents and guardians, you're checking the symptoms of your child every morning before you send them off to school. So those symptoms that we're looking at are, do they have a temperature of 100.4 or greater? Do they have a sore throat? Do they have a new cough? Or are there some GI symptoms happening? Or maybe they have an onset of a severe headache. It's really important if your child's is exhibiting any of these symptoms, you need to keep them home. If a child comes to school and is, is exhibiting any of these symptoms, we will have them wait in a separate room until someone can come and pick them up. So we want to make sure everyone's health and safe, healthy and safe. We don't want you to, as parents to feel that pressure to send them even if they're not feeling well. So we have waived some of our typical attendance procedures and and that we just want, if you're not feeling well, you need to stay home, but we need you here as often as possible. So if you have any questions about that, please give us a call and we'll be happy to help. In terms of breakfast and lunch, breakfast and lunch is very much the same and, and lots of levels, still free to everyone at Coloma Community Schools. Breakfast for the junior high will be served at the start of second hour, just like we always have. So that will be eight in the classroom. So lunch, like we talked about, will be provided by grade level. So we'll have those three lunches. And that does a couple of things. It reduces the amount of students that we have in the cafeteria. So that allows us to provide more social distancing. Also, um, we will be having assigned seats in the cafeteria. So we'll allow you to sit by your friends. Um, but we'll, those will be your same seats that you will sit in for the duration of the year. Um, so those are just a couple of changes. The other thing is that our cafeteria has been remodeled. It's beautiful. And our cafeteria staff will be creating all the meals that will be grab and, grow, grab and go style. So you'll just take, you'll still be able to make a choice, 
You'll take the one that you choose and it will be all boxed and ready to go for you. So the expectations of the junior high, they really haven't changed. Come ready to learn, be respectful and be safe. And as long as you're doing those three, three things, we won't have any issues. Now, RTI, we're still having that RTI time period happening daily in our building. You notice that it's after a third hour prior to the start of lunches. And this is that built-in time every day with the exception of half days and delayed start days that you're able to get that extra help. So if you are struggling with a concept in a particular class, this would be a time that you could touch base with that teacher. The one thing that has changed this year is that you will be returning to a particular class on a specific day. So for example, um, on day one, you will return to your first hour class for RTI. On day two, you will return to your second hour class and you'll be able to receive the extra help that way. Um, and this is just another way that we're trying to keep our cohorts as tight as possible. We're trying to make sure that you're only having contact with the same students throughout your day. So after school, after school, we're going to have a slightly staggered dismissal. We're going to dismiss our sixth graders a little bit earlier than our seventh. And then again, our eighth, everyone will be dismissed and out by three o'clock. One change is that everyone needs to have transportation at the end of the day at three o'clock. Study hall will not be held this year. And so everyone needs to exit the building as soon as school is dismissed. The only exception at this point would be athletics. And at that point, you would be reporting directly to your coach. So make sure that that transportation is arranged. We won't be able to allow people to wait within the building, and even our staff will be exiting the building shortly after dismissal because we want to provide our maintenance and custodial staff the time and space that they need to do the cleaning that's required this year. Chromebooks. Every student will receive their Chromebook just like we have in the past. Grades six through eight will receive a Chromebook on their first day of school your responsibility to bring it to school and charged every day. This is an educational device, just like a pencil. You gotta make sure you're bringing that every day and you're taking good care of it, okay? Insurance is going to be available again this year. It's only $20 and we are accepting that payment until September 11th. So parents, I highly encourage the insurance on the Chromebooks. As you can see here from this graphic, just simple things costs more than $20. So a broken screen is 35, a broken lid is 30, missing hinges are eight, broken track pads are 47. So something as simple as forgetting that your pencil is inside your Chromebook and shutting it, that sometimes that will break the screen and sometimes break a, a hinge as well. And you've already doubled what it would cost you with insurance. So we highly recommend the insurance. You can send that payment in with your child they can drop it in the main office until September 11th. So what needs to be done before school starts? There's been lots of questions as we've approached the start of the school year. So a couple of things to check on, especially my seventh graders. Make sure you're up to date on immunizations. We typically, most children typically need some boosters before seventh grade. So make sure those are up to date. Also pick up any supplies that you might need and then watch for your schedules to be released to the parent and student portal. Those will be coming out soon. So let's talk about supplies. We've put together just a requested supply list of things that might be helpful. So one of the things that we wanna do is we want to reduce the amount of supplies that might be shared between students. So we're asking that everyone have their own pencil case or pouch and they fill that with the pens and pencils they might need markers, highlighters, um, colored pencils, all of that, glue sticks, all of that stuff and keep that in your pencil pouch for your use only. We're going to try and reduce those sharing of supplies. Also, students will need a pair of headphones or earbuds. And there will be several times that you'll need to listen to videos on your Chromebook and those will be important to make sure you have those each day. We also recommend that you have a notebook for each class and a folder of some sort. Now, in the past, 
students have carried those large binders with folders and notebooks in them. And you're welcome to do that. But this year, you're also going to be allowed to take your backpack from class to class. So you may want something smaller, knowing that you're going to be able to carry your backpack. And we're allowing you to carry your backpack so that you can have your own supplies with you. So it'll be real easy to keep your folders, your notebooks, and that pencil case in there. And so you have everything that you need from class to class. We also recommend that you pick up a couple more masks. The, districts will, the district will be providing two masks, but it might be helpful for you as a family to have additional ones so that you're not always washing masks. We will have hand sanitizer throughout the building, but again, sometimes it's helpful to have a bottle of hand sanitizer in the backpack if they need it. We're also recommending that every child have a reusable water bottle. And this is because we're going to recommend to students that they use our bottle fillers on our, our drinking fountains as opposed to drinking directly from the drinking fountain. So a reusable bottle that they can just keep in their backpack will make that a little bit easier and safer as well. So schedules. We will provide paper copies of schedules on the first day of school, but we will be launching them to the student and parent portal on September 25th or I'm sorry, August 25th, and those will be available in the portal. If you have issues getting into the portal, you can contact our help desk and they can help you um, take care of that. For parents, my number one piece of advice for parents at the junior high level is to make sure that you have access to the parent portal for PowerSchool. Now, this is something you can access on a laptop or desktop, or you can download the app directly to your phone. And in the, in the parent portal, you'll be able to see live grades, report cards, and even communicate with the teachers directly right through the app. So again, if you have issues connecting, you can email that helpdesk at ccs.coloma.org, and they'll be happy to help you with any of that. So the return to school schedule. You have received something in your email and it's been posted on social media, but here are the important dates for you to know. We're doing a staggered return where we are bringing in one grade level per day for that first week of school. So on Monday, August 31st, that's a half day of school, eighth graders only will report to the building. You will come in through your eighth grade entrance at the end of the building and dismissal that day is at 1137. On that day, eighth graders, you're going to receive your paper schedules, you'll receive your Chromebooks, and you will walk through a daily schedule. And we'll also go over a lot of the new procedures on how to get to class, getting out of the cafeteria, all of that information. Seventh graders, my seventh graders, you'll be reporting on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday is a full day. And that's going to allow us to just go a little bit slower and getting you all the information that you need. Again, you're going to get your schedules. You're going to get your Chromebooks, your locker combinations, all of that stuff. And teachers will be showing you how to get into Google Classroom and access each of their classes. Dismissal that day is at 3 o'clock. Same thing will happen on Wednesday, September 2nd for our sixth graders. They'll attend a full day. On Thursday, September 3rd, that will be our first remote day. So we understand that there is a possibility at some point in the school year, we might be forced to go back to remote. So we want to practice and make sure all of our students have the skills to be able to get into Google Classroom and be able to communicate with their teachers. So all of my students, 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, on that Thursday, you're going to log in to all six of your Google Classrooms, and each teacher is going to have a very small thing that you're going to need to know, need to do to be able to communicate with them so that they know that you can get in and you can do what you need to do in your Google Classroom. So then we don't have school the 4th through the 7th through that holiday weekend, and then everyone will report on September 8th. So if you have any questions about the back to school schedule or any policies or procedures that we've put in place, please don't hesitate to reach out and talk to us. We are available in the office and in the building this week. 
We look forward to seeing you and we're so excited to have students back in the building. Thanks.